Okay, so we're doing a bit more with the um, closed loop motor control. Okay, so what have I done? We've got um, our uh, motor carriage moving back and forth based on about a 12 volt input into the motor. I think this is actually up to about a 24 volt motor. I haven't tested it um, or pulled it off to get any relevant um, model information, but my my sense is that it's probably um, it'll probably handle more than um, 12 volts. I adjusted the code to do a couple of things. First of all, it initializes itself by putting the uh, motor in uh, the print head into a home position, which you could probably actually do by um, putting a couple of limit switches on here and then it could auto home, but um, we'll get to that later. By um, looking at the encoder pulses and when it gets beyond a certain level, change direction, and when it gets below a certain level, change direction. And it occurs to me that we could do the same thing to this axis because we've got an encoder down here on this guy. And let's um, let's see if that's actually the case because it would be nice to be able to like uh, run this thing, uh, run both axes at the same time because now you have an XY. This will be increasing the speed to 150. And that's 150 out of 250. So that's... Oh, I know what it is. I don't have enough current. I'm clipping current. There we go. Okay, let's see what that does. Okay, does our x-axis homing? Does our y-axis determine... Whoa! Uh, what is going on? Um, oh. Okay, need to do a bit of debugging on that. So now that's going to power. It's not supposed to look like that. It's supposed to look like that. So, something's wrong with my sensor, my optical sensor. That's not a very square wave. So here's my test circuit. We've got the um, quad NAND gate with Schmidt trigger inputs. Um, pin, what is that, a 14 is pull high. Pin seven is ground. So if I, these come um, in, so the first three um, are input A, input B, output, um, one, so A1, B1, Y1, A2, B2, Y2, and then going back up the other way, A3, B3, Y3, A4, B4, Y4, and then power. So power up there, ground there. So we've got one of our inputs coming into our B input on our first um, NAND gate, and then we've got this pulled high. So A is always pulled high. And then the output is going to be the inverse of whatever this signal is. And it's not square, but it comes out nice and square because of the Schmidt trigger. And let's see if that helps our Arduino read that encoder. Okay, so the top signal is coming out of the rotary encoder, and the bottom signal is coming out of the Schmidt trigger. Well, which is not a Schmidt trigger, but it is a quad NAND gate with Schmidt trigger input so you just tie one of the inputs high and then you've got an inverting NAND gate so um, yeah yeah not ideal I'm uh, one phase out but as long as both are going through you just you're a phase out of sync with what is actually happening but it shouldn't be a problem anyways there we go now one thing you do notice though that the um, it's not a uh, uniform on and off. 
And I don't know if that's going to be a problem, but we'll see. All the way backwards. And then oscillate between how far it goes in 1.2 seconds. Yeah, there we go. Okay, shred trigger fixed it. So let's take a look at that waveform just to make sure that we're not losing our mind here. Noisy when the motor's running, but I don't have any ferrites on the motor either. Yeah, it's noisy when the motor runs. So I'm going to throw some ferrites on the motor um, cables, cables, the motor leads, and see if that helps. That looks better. There it is without again. And there's all that noise on the line. But if you just throw a little toroid, loop the wire motor windings through, it cleans that noise up. That reminds me of something. Okay, but that's just using timing to um, figure out where things have to go. So it's not using the actual encoder positions to um, feedback its position, uh, the encoder values to feedback position information. So I haven't got any calibration going here at all. Um, I don't have any control over acceleration or deceleration. And I don't have any fine, uh, like I said, position control. So those are the next things to add. What we want to be able to do is we want to finally control both the x-axis and the y-axis with these these optical encoders in order to, to do anything of you know real value. So that will be the next step. But for now, I think that call it a video and we will um, uh, pick this up later. And so as always, thank you very much for watching and we'll talk to you later. Bye for now.